12. The news at 530 starts right now. A man is recovering after first responders rescued him from his apartment that was on fire earlier today. It happened on Brazew near Northwest Military Drive. Firefighters tell our Alyssa Cole the potentially deadly situation could have played out differently if the victim's smoke detector was working. At the place of Castle Hill's apartments, neighbors are learning a lesson after a fire broke out in a second story apartment unit Sunday morning. Police officers broke down the door of this apartment. They found a man laying at the front door unconscious from smoke inhalation. His smoke detector never went off. I was nervous because we started hearing sounds and we didn't know what we could do. Paramedics treated the man at the scene. We spoke to a woman living under the apartment unit that caught on fire. She didn't want to be on camera, but she is relieved to know her neighbor is going to be okay. She says after what happened, she'll be reaching out to maintenance to make sure her smoke detector is up to par. We're going to ask our son that if he could ask the management how to make sure the smoke detector is working. Crews were able to extinguish the flames quickly from the kitchen, and investigators believe it's where the fire may have started. But for now, it's unclear whether or not the resident can return to his home. No, pues sí. It is very important for people who live here to make sure their smoke detectors are working. Alyssa Cole, case at 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. A woman was arrested for back-to-back -back aggravated robberies. This is 20-year-old Emily Robles. She was arrested this week for trying to rob the same victims twice in a day at their apartment. According to the Bear County's uh, arrest affidavit or warrant, Robles approached Charisse Costwall as they were entering their home. She began screaming and forcefully pushed her way into the apartment where two of the victim's roommates li also lived. Robles fired a shot from her gun, stole their phones, and returned later confronting another roommate. The other victim was able to take her gun and ran to the leasing office to call police. Robles was later arrested and confessed to her crimes. And some sad news from Eagle Pass. 12 migrants were found trapped in a train car. One has died. This is from a letter by the Mexican consulate. 12 migrants were found in a rail car in Eagle Pass by Border Patrol. They were trapped for over 24 hours and suffered from heat exhaustion. One of the migrants called authorities as, a people, uh, as people started dying with one confirmed death and three others hospitalized. Authorities responded to the Union Pacific train yard where they found the migrants. Three of them were taken to Fort Duncan Regional Medical Center and the eight others were taken into Border Patrol custody. Hey guys, this is about the other night eight. As per VP, that there's, there's one inside, possibly unresponsive. We're gonna have one DOA here, one DOA. Homeland Security is starting an investigation on this incident as there was another very similar situation that happened earlier this week in Canipa, that town located between Uvalde and Sabinal. Former President Donald Trump is facing several investigations and possible indictment charges, but that's not slowing him down for his presidential re-election campaign. ABC's Alex Perche with details on the political rally from Waco. Donald Trump took the stage in Waco, Texas for the first major rally of his 2024 campaign. He opened the rally with a video showing images of the January 6th insurrection, people in prison for their actions that day singing the national anthem. Trump standing with his hand over his heart. The former president defiant in the face of numerous allegations, saying he's done nothing wrong. From the beginning, it's been one witch hunt and phony investigation after another. Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg is investigating Trump's alleged hush money payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels before the 2016 election. After falsely claiming he would be arrested last Tuesday, Trump made an ominous claim about the consequences of an indictment. Writing on social media, it could result in potential death and destruction. Some Democrats blasting the former president's rhetoric. It's dangerous, and if he keeps it up, he's going to get someone killed. We've already seen the consequences of incitement from the former president. Security outside the Manhattan courthouse being stepped up ahead of a grand jury's expected return on Monday. Meanwhile, Trump is facing a separate investigation into his actions surrounding the January 6th riot, as well as an investigation into his handling of classified materials after leaving office. Special counsel Jack Smith successfully fought to bring Trump's attorney, Evan Corcoran, before a grand jury. Sources tell ABC News the special counsel believes Trump intentionally and deliberately misled his lawyers about the retention of classified documents. The judge convinced there was preliminary evidence that Trump may have used Corcoran to advance a criminal scheme. Trump has repeatedly denied any wrongdoing. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Oregon's Wonderland hosted a race to benefit families and people with disabilities. 
The funds, well, those are used for those who are in the most need. Millions of people in the southern U.S. are still under storm watch. This says tornadoes already killed countless lives. We'll update you on the recovery efforts in Mississippi and track how the storms may still continue. Recovery efforts are underway as powerful storms rip through the southeastern United States, killing 26 people. Here's Ivan Rodriguez with CNN on how a state of emergency was declared in Georgia and the threats of coming storms are still on their way. The resources that the people here in Rolling Fork and throughout Mississippi need, the help is on the way. On Sunday, cleanup and recovery efforts continue in hard-hit Rolling Fork, Mississippi, after a powerful E4 tornado flattened much of the community late Friday night. What we've seen over the last 36 hours in Mississippi, on the one hand, has been heartbreaking to see the loss and devastation of these communities, but on the other hand, has been inspiring and gives me great reason for optimism. At least 10 confirmed tornadoes struck Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee. And while search and rescue operations are still ongoing, President Joe Biden approved a disaster declaration for the hardest hit parts of Mississippi. To the people of Mississippi, uh, that we are here, uh, not just today, uh, but for the long haul. We are going to work with the team, with the state team here, to assess additional counties to see if any more need to be added to this declaration. In Georgia, a large and extremely dangerous tornado struck south of LaGrange Sunday morning. Some of the members of our church have had some injuries. Uh, their homes were uh, torn up, but there are no fatalities. Uh, something to be thankful for. You can see the aftermath of the destruction the storm left behind. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp declared a state of emergency. Meanwhile, in Rolling Fork, residents are bracing for the possibility of more severe storms as they face a long road to recovery. I'm Ivan Rodriguez reporting. Morgan's Wonderland had a 5K race today and it was for a great cause. The money raised is used for medical equipment for families and people living with disabilities. Founded in 1992 by Merlin Johnson, Project MEND, also known as the Medical Equipment Network for those with disabilities, has helped those with living with disabilities be able to afford medical equipment needed to live a more comfortable life. Proceeds from the 5K race went to this cause, and starting at 9 in the morning, racers had three hours to complete the route, which began at the park and went around Toyota Field. A runner comments on why her and her family decided to participate in the race. It's expensive and dealing with insurance is not always an easy task. They don't always cover everything. So, um, you know, Project Men allow people to get that equipment that they may not otherwise be able to. This is the second time Project Men held this event and they plan on hosting many more to further help people in need. All right, let's go outside with live cam here this Sunday evening. Beautiful sunshine right now here in San Antonio. A different view from what we saw earlier this morning with the cloud cover in place. Now, if you have stepped outside today, especially this afternoon, you have likely noticed the humidity that is back in place as well. That gulf moisture taking back over. That's going to lead to some daily isolated chances for rain as we head into the upcoming work week. We also have have more temperature changes that are in the forecast as we see a few fronts move through south central Texas and along with that a few windy days are ahead. We'll get you all the details and plan out this week coming up after the break. Welcome back your time 543 on this amazing Sunday me and Mia are wearing uh, blue but it's not the Sunday blues because as I mentioned it's been a beautiful day so far. It really has all things considered. You know, this morning we had the cloud cover in place, but as expected, we were able to see that break up a little bit more this afternoon, leading way to more sunshine, which has helped temperatures climb into the 80s. But kind of the biggest change right now from where we were this time yesterday. And again, you've noticed this if you have stepped outside in and around San Antonio today is the addition of that Gulf moisture dew points, how we measure the low level moisture in the atmosphere right now sitting about 25 to even 35 degrees higher than where we were 24 hours ago. That just means that, yes, that stickiness is now there. If you are stepping out for any of those Sunday evening plans, you likely will notice that. But you can see we've got more of the blue skies in place.
increase here in San Antonio this hour. That sunshine has really helped temperatures climb into the low to mid 80s this afternoon. 84 over at SA International, 85 on the south side of Bear County at Stinson this hour as well. If you are stepping out here over the next few hours, low 80s by 7 p.m. transitioning into the 70s after the sun goes down. Nothing notable across south central Texas on the radar right now. That is a much different story as we were talking about earlier in the newscast for our friends and neighbors off to our east. Unfortunately, more severe weather for areas that were impacted by those strong storms and even tornadoes on Friday. Tornado watch and severe thunderstorm watch continue for portions of Louisiana, Mississippi, stretching over into Alabama and even parts of the Florida panhandle as those storms continue to work their way away from the state of Texas. Now back here at home, nothing like that. We are quiet out there right now and as we head into the overnight hours, temperatures are expected to fall into the 50s and low 60s by wake up time Monday morning. We do have that humidity in place. So again, you'll likely notice that by the Monday morning drive because of that moisture, additional cloud cover is expected to accompany our Monday and also we could find a few sprinkles out there here in San Antonio, especially tomorrow morning. Mostly cloudy skies still expected into Monday afternoon. Overall daytime highs are expected to once again climb into the low 80s in and around San Antonio and then maybe some mid 80s, especially across our far southern counties. 82 here in town tomorrow afternoon, 81 in Bull Verde, 82 in Comfort and 83 stretching over to Hondo out there in Medina County. Now into this week, we've got daily chances to find some isolated showers, maybe a couple of stray thunderstorms out there. Right off the bat, it's not going to be for everybody each and every day, but probably a good idea to keep the umbrella in the car just in case should you briefly need to use it. Now here's a look at your future cast for tomorrow. By tomorrow morning, some patchy fog is possible, lowering visibility just a little bit across the coastal plains, our far southeastern counties. You can also see here on the future cast, maybe a few isolated light showers, few sprinkles possible here in San Antonio. That generally is the trend throughout the first half of the day. You can see into Monday afternoon, just the cloud cover still with us for the most part. Maybe a few peaks of sunshine here and there. It's Monday evening and into the overnight hours on Monday that we may need to monitor for a few showers to a stray rumble of thunder to pop up as we see our next cold front move in. Maybe a few lingering sprinkles possible by the Tuesday morning commute. It is worth mentioning Storm Prediction Center has placed a very, very low end one out of five risk for an isolated strong storm to pop up if we can find that. It is a very conditional chance and it's not really uh, high in terms of confidence. That's pretty low right now, but still we'll keep eyes on that before the sun comes up on Tuesday. And then once it does expect windy conditions, gusts upwards of 35 miles per hour possible for your Tuesday. Highs are near about 70, so a bit cooler. We'll quickly warm things up by Thursday and Friday though, JP, ahead of our next front that moves in ahead of next weekend. Loving this week. We got the beautiful weekend and then we got the rain chances that we desperately need. Good stuff. Thanks for that, Mia. But now something else that I'm loving is that <laughs> Brahma's win, Andrew. Horns forward, baby. Yeah, that's right. Speaking of things that were desperately needed, San Antonio needed to break this three game losing skid and they did just that. This time in a rematch on the road against the Arlington Renegades and they did it with defense. We'll show you how they got it done coming up. Plus, goalkeeper of the year Jordan Farr got it done last night in dramatic fashion. We'll hear from him next. Jordan Farr was the hero last night, helping San Antonio FC secure three points in big board sports. The reigning USL goalkeeper of the year came up big when his club needed it most. And last night's Western Conference final rematch against Colorado Springs switchbacks lived up to the billing. Muhammad Abu broke a scoreless tie in the 83rd minute thanks to a fortunate bounce and a well-placed header that gave SAFC a 1-0 lead. But a handball in stoppage time set the stage for Farr's heroics. His fifth save of the night was his best. How did he rise to the occasion?
try to just stay super focused when those moments happen. Try to see who's going to take the kick and try to understand like how, who, what type of player is he, um, where has he gone in the past. I actually looked over to Juan to kind of see if he knew much about this specific PK taker. Juan said the side that I went and that was kind of the ball game. I kind of, I, I was hoping it wasn't going to go down the middle, so I was trying to deter that. But at the end of the day, we deserve three points. We deserve more goals than I think we scored, um, and I think we well deserve the shutout. San Antonio next hits the road to California to take on Monterey Bay FC next Saturday at 9 p.m. Our San Antonio Brahmas hit the road to Arlington for a rematch against the Renegades, looking to snap their three-game skid. Second quarter, San Antonio in control, up 3-0 when the defense makes a play. Delonte Scott sacked quarterback Drew Plitt for a five-yard loss, and Jordan Williams was right there to scoop and score a 39-yard fumble return touchdown. Brahmas lead 9-0 at the break, and the Renegades tie it up in the third quarter, but the Brahmas respond in the fourth. John Parker Romo hits two field goals and finishes three for three on the day. Brahmas are finally back in the win column, 15 to nine. Our San Antonio Spurs wrap up their four-game road trip this evening in Boston against the Celtics. In their last outing against the Wizards, Julian Champagny had an impressive showing, impacting the game in a lot of different ways and finishing with 12 points in 18 minutes. He's emblematic of the Spurs as a whole right now, looking to develop their young talent. How does it feel being a part of that kind of environment? I think the best part is that we're all young. We all get to learn from each other, and everybody's receptive to learning. Like no one's really upset when someone tells them, "Oh, you messed up." Like you know, like I messed up today, and coach got on me about it. And the players were like, "Yo, like you know, like do this instead of that," and it was fine. Like you know, so um, I think it is a unique situation when you have a bunch of guys that are doing the same thing you're trying to do, um, but it's fun. This game is currently underway. San Antonio trails the Celtics 43-40 in the second quarter. We'll have highlights and reaction from this one tonight on Instant Replay. For the third time ever, a nine seed has advanced to the Final Four. This year, Florida Atlantic is making history. The Owls rallied to knock off Kansas State in the Elite Eight yesterday, 79-76. Prior to this season, the Owls had only been to one NCAA tournament in their history, and they lost their only game. With the advent of the transfer portal and NIL deals, it would have been easy for the players on this team to go their separate ways after last season's 19 and 15 finish. Instead, they all came back, won the Conference USA title, and are now one win away from playing for the national championship. We knew that, you know, the grass isn't always greener, and really it just comes down to how much work you put in. And we already had a good chemistry last year, and uh, the pieces that we added just complimented everything we had going on. So there was nobody that took anything away from the locker room. And um, just, a, just one unit of guys who just love to work and compete. Now on the flip side of that coin, UConn has been here and done that. The four seeded Huskies cruised past number three Gonzaga, 82 to 54, to clinch the program's sixth all-time Final Four appearance. In four of the previous instances, they've gone on to win the whole thing, most recently in 2014. They want to do it all again this year. To start the season, they have us in the top 25, so we got a lot to prove. We still got a chip on our shoulder, and we had a goal, and it was to make it to the Final Four, but more importantly, to win a, a national championship, so that's what we're still pushing towards. The number two Texas Longhorns are in action right now against number five Miami, and Texas currently leads 65-53 to in the second half. Texas is playing without Dylan DeSue, and earlier today, San Diego State advanced to their first Final Four with a 57-56 win over Creighton. We'll have highlights from the Longhorns and reaction from that game tonight on Instant Replay. For the fourth straight playoff, Southwest High School will have both their boys and girls soccer teams play in the area round. The Dragons dispatched their bi-district opponents by a combined score of 14-0 at home on Thursday night. That's the standard of excellence these programs have set, and part of that success comes from the support they've shown each other and the love they get from the community. We're fortunate to be able to coach a lot of great kids. You know, I was on the girls' side uh, the past four years, and it's my first year with the boys. And you know, it's it's great to be at a place where both programs kind of work together, help each other out, and you know, that's what makes this space special. It's amazing. Uh, growing up playing soccer my whole life, um, once I got to Southwest, I mean, I've been here my entire coaching career, um, and it's a great environment. It's a great environment to work in, and the kids are just amazing, and uh, they care, and we all care about it. So we just. Hope we can continue to keep the tradition alive. The girls will host Canyon in the area round tomorrow night at 7. The boys will take on Leander Glenn the following night at 7. If you haven't had a chance to catch a game at Southwest, highly recommend it. It's a great venue and a great atmosphere. Best of luck to both teams. Thanks for that, Andrew. You got it. We'll be right back. 
All right, more cloud cover is in store for our Monday. A few sprinkles possible first thing in the morning. We'll start off in the low 60s here in San Antonio and then highs head for the low 80s. Now still a few showers to stray rumble possible Monday night. Daily isolated chances for rain as well as some temperature swings into this week. JP. Awesome stuff. Enjoy the sun while you got it. Then come back home and turn on KSAT at 10 o'clock. Thanks for joining us, guys.